First Kings chapter 14. Jeroboam, Rehoboam, nations been split. Jeroboam's north, Rehoboam south, Judah. And at that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, not giving ever a name, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise, that's the first time that word shows up, disguise thyself. A costume. Pretend. We'll get to another word in a moment. I'll make my vacation Bible and youth group messages. Disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam. So there's the definition of disguise. Be someone who you're not. Lie. Pretend. And get thee to Shiloh. Behold there Ahijah, and that's 1129. 20, that's the prophet that came to Jeroboam, ripped that coat, someone's coat in 12 pieces. Said, here, here's 10. Two is going to stay in Judah. You're going to get 10. So, Abijah, who is the son of Jeroboam, falls sick. And it's got to be serious, because Jeroboam, I'm not going to a doctor. Notice he's going to God. He's going to Ahijah, the God that God sent to Jeroboam, the God. Why didn't he go to his gods? Why didn't he go to his priest? Why didn't he go to his altar? Why is it at the mode of trouble in his life, death, near for a child, sickness? He tells his wife, hey, I want you to go down to this preacher. This preacher is of God. He's not any of my prophets. And I am so wicked and I am so vile. I want you to pretend to be someone who you're not. I don't have it to be to go myself. Evidently, Jeroboam's gods and religion is not working. The prophet which told me that I should be king over this people. Again, that's 1131. And take with thee ten loaves and crackles. That's the only place that shows up and it's like a, a cracker or a biscuit. So bring presents. It's not for free. A man of God is service a man that does anything of God. You don't go there free. You pay him. He's got to eat. He's got to drink. He's got to live. A cruise of honey. And go to him. And he shall tell thee what shall become of the child. What about your prophets? What about your altar? I guess they don't work. And Jeroboam's wife did so. And arose and went to Shiloh. She's an obedient wife. Even doing wrong. Pretending to be somebody else. And came to the house of Hijah. But Ahijah could not see for his eyes were set by reason of age. And as you get older, your, your eyes go, go and go and go. You don't get better by evolution. The Bible says in age, the eyes are going. Old age. And the Lord said unto Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing for the, of thee, for her son, for he is sick. God speaks in the ears of Ahijah. There's a woman coming to you. That's a, that is Jeroboam's wife. Notice he said, Behold the wife of Jeroboam. Now Jeroboam told his wife, Disguise yourself so you're not known as the wife of Jeroboam. God said, The wife of Jeroboam is coming. And the, the subject at hand is a sick child. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, and we'll, we'll get to the what thus and does. For it shall be, when she cometh in, that she shall feign herself to be another woman. An actress. A pretend. So, when we got costumes, when we pretend to be somebody else in our church plays, and our skits, and everything to do with vacation, Bible, and all the children, we're just teaching them to be liars. And God called this woman who she was by Jeroboam. Pretend to be somebody else. God says, feign. Feign means to pretend. You're not who you are. 
hypocrite. And God spells it out. And it was so, when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet, <laughs> that's bad. And I don't know what she's wearing, but he could hear her feet. Sandals or something like that. And she came in at the door. That he said, come in, thou wife of Jeroboam. Oh, God already told you. Don't pretend to be somebody else. You're not going to fool God. How dare somebody come up to say in a play or, or acting part or whatever it is, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. How dare you? That was sinless perfection. How dare you get up and say, oh, I'm Joseph and the leader of the... No, how dare you? Joseph was a remarkable man. Moses, Paul, Elijah. That's not who you are. Your name is George, Sally, whatever your parents gave you as a name, whatever your identity is, that is your identity. You're not to be somebody else. And God told Ahijah, here comes the wife of Jeroboam. She's dressed up as somebody else. He can't see. And she walks in and says, wife of Jeroboam. And that's what's going to happen to the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. Think you're Moses? Think you're Jesus? Think you're Joseph? I'll show you. Why faintest? That's the first time that word shows up. Thyself to be another. So see, there's the definition. It is not her true identity. And the Bible is truly against someone who pretends to be someone else. For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. That's her answer. He said, come on in, wife of Jeroboam. Why faint this out to be somebody else? And she just, listen, I've got some heavy tidings here. So the sickness of this child is severe. Go to a real prophet, hon. And she comes in and says, it's heavy tidings. Go tell Jeroboam, that's her husband, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Now this would be the thus and thus of verse 5. For as much as I have exalted thee from among the people, lifted you up, gave you a position, I promoted you, and made thee prince over my people Israel, king, he did, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David. Now all this is, is going back to Ahijah's mind, of that cult. This is exactly the prophecy I told you, Jeroboam. The prophecy has been confirmed and has happened. And gave it thee. And yet thou hast not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who have followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in my eyes. No adultery, no murder mentioned. Don't carry a grudge of other people's sins when God's taking care of it. But, that has done evil. Now, this is Jeroboam's life. He has done e evil above all that were before thee. For thou hast gone and made thee other gods. So, first charge of God is you made other gods. And molten images. Or called aids of worship in religion. God said in verse 9, but has done evil, and in the list of evil is molten images. You would think that people in religion would get the idea by the Bible that God is against statues, images, and all kinds of junk. Take your Catholic friend and read verse 9 and say, but has thou done evil. Do you know what evil is, ma'am? Do you know what evil is, sir? Oh, yeah, I do. It's very bad. It's very wicked. All right, then finish the rest of the verse and say, and then if the reply is, well, it's aids to worship, God says it's evil. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. And they removed that from the second commandment and make number 10 into two. Then say, why is your church hiding? Because God calls it in this place evil. To provoke me to anger. The worship of other gods and images makes God angry. And God says it's evil. 
What more are you going to say? And has cast me, God, behind thy back. Get, get back there, God. Get back there. I don't want to see you. I've got these other guys. I got this religion. You get back. Stay back there, God. I, you stay. You stay in the back, cause I need you. I'll slow down and let you catch up to me. As with this sick child. All right, God, come up here and take care of this problem. And when you're done taking care of this problem, then you can get back there again. I'll go back and worship all my gods. That angers and is evil, according to God. Therefore, behold, I, this is God, will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam. Evil is the reactions, the conduct after sin. They'll say, I believe Isaiah, I create evil, God speaking. Now, that's not sin. Disease, judgments, the flood, tornadoes, illness of a child maybe one of the evils of God, and let me very much say maybe, because not every disease, not every flood, not every natural disaster, not every trouble in your life may be God upon you for evil. It may be Satan, Job 1 and 2. It may be your own doing. But we see here that this has fallen upon jo Je uh, Jeroboam for one reason. He is turned away from God. And this is because the child's sickness of turning away from God. And you can say, yes, God did this. God is doing it as a chastisement, as a punishment. He's trying to get Jeroboam to repent and get right. And we'll cut off from Jeroboam him that pisses against the wall. That would be males, dogs, cats. It's a plain, simple statement. And him that is shut up, they can't come out. I forget what, what was it. How, shut ins. They're unable to get out. They're convalescent care. They can't do anything really from themselves anymore. And left in Israel. And I will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam. As a man taken away dung. That's a very, I mean, that's not something, you know, you can pray down the street. Look at the dung I got. It's like, you get it, you get rid of it as far as you can. You bury it. I guarantee you would take dung, you would big, dig, dig a hole, and you bury it. That's what the old outhouses were. You dig a big hole. Once it gets really filled, you put the dirt in it. You fill it completely up, and then you move to another spot. When you got septic system, it goes under the ground. Till it be all gone. The dung. And that's what God's going to do with Jeroboam. What are likeness? Jeroboam, as far as you and your family, what can I liken it to? Doo-doo. Kaka. There was a dung gate. They would wash that stuff right through that gate. They washed the city streets daily. Him that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat. Now we're not talking about Jer we're not talking about Je Jezebel, though that will happen later. So what he's saying here, dogs were scavengers. They're going to fall in the streets. They weren't house pets. That and pigs and cats and all that. They they would fight the rodents. They would get rid of the uh, dead things. If a bird dropped dead on the thing, a dog or a cat would have came and eaten it. And he's saying is the bodies of the people of Jeroboam are going to fall in the street. And dogs are going to eat, just like they do Jezebel's body. And him that dieth in the field, not in the city, shall the fowls of the air eat. For the Lord has spoken it. I'll take care of their carcasses. They're going to be dogs. They're going to be animal food. And then as a result of being animal food, they'll, they will be, what, what happens when an animal eats food? As a man take away the dung. He becomes dung. Jezebel was dog dung. Yeah, I always make a little joke. Be careful not to step into Jezebel. That's what he's talking about to people here. These people of Jeroboam, the Bible says, you're going to be dog poop. Something that you sometimes step in. What a, 
This is the loving God. I am so angry with it. The next thing I can declare you as is poop. I love you. I hate to sin, but I love you. You're a bunch of poop. I'm going to destroy you like poop. I'm going to get rid of you like poop. I guarantee you this is not preach or touch in your modern churches today. You know what God says about today's church? Look, You make me vomit. I'll spew you out of my mouth. God. Arise thou therefore and get thee to thy own house. Speaking to Jeroboam's wife. Time for you to go. What a great message she has. And when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. This whole thing about her husband. The wickedness of her husband. And then he concludes, he's going to die. Your son will die. And all Israel shall mourn for him. And bury him. He's not going to be like the poop. He's going to be quite opposite of dung. For he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave. Going to be no burials of Jeroboam. And a burial among the Jew is, if you're not burial with a proper burial, that's sacrilege. That's like the Catholics. If you're not buried in a Catholic cemetery, boom, you're going to an auxiliary purgatory. Or you burn double. If you don't have the priest give you the last rites when you're dead. It, it, the Jews, if, if you're not properly buried, if your body's left out in the field for the animals to devour, if the street, the dogs are, the dogs are unclean. Vultures that would eat your body are unclean. Lying dead in the field, you're unclean. Shall come to the grave. This is the child. Because in him... There is found some good thing toward the Lord God of Israel in the house of Jeroboam. Some. Even that child's got some, all have sinned, come short of the glory of God, but that child is doing much better than any of the males of, of the house of Jeroboam. One particular child out of this whole thing, one particular life out of this whole entire family said, that's the only one going to go to, a, to the graveyard. That's a bad family. That's a wicked family. And there are a dime a dozen. There are whole families out there that when time is gone in the great white throne judgment, the entire family, not one person is going to be saved in that family. Will all end up in the lake of fire that burneth forever. And yet, there will be families at the great white throne judgment and they'll get there and there'll be, and there'll be one member missing out of the whole family. And that member of the family will be on the other side. He's been judged at the judgment seat of Christ. He will be found walking the street of gold of New Jerusalem. Because he had done what God. There was some good thing in him. What's the good thing that would be in a Christian today? It would be Jesus Christ. Listen people. Not all families will get saved. The Bible says many will go the broad way. Jeroboam's family is that many. Only a few. One. Eight people got in that ark. One person of... I know his two daughters came. I don't count his wife because his wife was sent towards Sodom. But out of Lot and his family, one person really had the mind to go. And even then the angel's like, get off that lazy boy. Let's go. I have to drag him out. Abraham, one man. Out of his father and his kindred. One man. It's a few. Moreover, the Lord shall raise him up a king over Israel, north, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? He's talking to Mrs. Jeroboam. And at the point he says, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day? She interrupts, what? She interrupts him. And he's like, but what? Shut up. We mean but what? I mean, what do you mean what? That's what that but what is. She answers what? But what even now? If not that, the other cause be, 
who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day? But wait, but wait a minute. Even now. It's either she says what? Or it's it's gonna happen sooner than you think. Either either case, it's a serious message by Ahijah. It's not something to be Tom Foolery. For the Lord shall smite Israel, and that's north. As a reed, that's the first time that word shows up. It's shaking in the water. It's a plant that grows in the water. And he shall root up Israel out of the good land, and he will. The two and a half tribes that settled on the wrong side of the Jordan River, they go into captivity first. Israel north will go into captivity by Assyria. And then Judah will go into captivity. Which he gave to thy fathers. Land shall, wait a minute, which gave unto their fathers land, shall scatter them beyond the river, that would be the Euphrates, because they have made their groves. You find a grove in every Catholic building, in a courtyard. And I mean, building, their churches, their, their schools, their nunnery, their priestery, wherever there's a major building, there is a grove. And in that grove, there's a bunch of trees, bushes. And in the middle of that grove, there's a statue, usually Mary. And I have been in many a Baptist churches where there, there's been a plastic form of trees, artificial trees. And right in the middle of those trees is a man that's been lifted up before God, higher than God, the pastor himself. That's a grove. A grove is plants and somebody in the center lifted up above God. And it's a sin. Provoking the Lord to anger. Groves provoke the Lord to anger. It is evil to have other gods. It is evil to have molten images. And it makes God angry. So, ask your Catholic friends if they have a, a grove. And they will say yes. And what does the Bible say? And it's a great opportunity to witness to him. And he shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin. Oh, that's the third time that's come up. Who made Israel to sin. That's the third time that's come up. Those are those calves. And his religious system. Ahab, or Ahaz, Jezebel's husband, later on is going to add, Jezebel is going to add 450 false prophets. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tarza. And when she came to the threshold of, threshold of the door, the child died. I always wonder why she, why she went home. <laughs> I was, I mean, a mother's love for a child be like, hey, come here, what? Tell Jeroboam what, <laughs> this message and I'm not coming home for that boy to live. But the prophecy was. She comes home, and as Ahijah said, the child died. And they buried him, as he said. All Israel mourned for him, as he said, according to the word of the Lord. So she had to go home. God said it. What if it was in her heart burning? Well, if I don't go home, he's going to survive and the word of God said, when you get home, which he spanked by the hand of his servant, Ahijah the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred. Remember, Solomon had peace. Jeroboam has war. How he reigned. Behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles. That's the first time that word shows up. Of the kings of Israel. That would be 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Now in the Jewish Old Testament. It's not 1st and 2nd Chronicles. It's Chronicles. And the days which Jer Jeroboam reigned. Were 2 and 20 years. 22 years. And he slept with his fathers. It means he was buried. He gets a burial. And Nadab. I, always, when I look at D's and B's. I get mixed up. Nadab. <laughs> 
<coughs> Excuse me. His son reigned in his stead. And we're going to leave off right there. We'll pick up with the next king next time. But just enough what Jeroboam. And here's a religion that matches a universal religion. And when it came to seriousness of action for prayer, that king went right to God. It went by to other gods. Went right to God. Shows you what his religion was.